welcome we will continue our video lecture series on the neurology we will study today about the cerebrospinal fluid cerebrospinal fluid is the fluid within the central nervous system in the subarachnoid space and if we talk about the color of cerebrospinal fluid it is crystal clear basically it does not have any color and it is odorless and the production per day is 500 ml and the bo body usage is 130 ml per day we have special cavities in the central nervous system through which the cerebrospinal fluid move first we have our lateral ventricle which is part of telencephalon second is our third ventricle which is part of our diencephalon and fourth ventricle is in the brain stem and the cerebrum the cerebrospinal fluid enter through the duct which is called cerebral aqueduct we will see how the cerebrospinal fluid made how the movement of cerebrospinal fluid occurred first of all how cerebrospinal fluid form the cerebrospinal fluid formed by the special structure that is called choroid plexus and this choroidal arteries are coming in and the veins are going out these vascular vessels are covered by our pia mater and the force of pia mater are called telecoroid basically the telecoroid are the double four layers of the pia mater with the blood vessel and with another additional layer ependyma that are called choroid plexus and telecoroid basic function is to produce the choroid plexus the csf is produced by choroid plexus now we will see how this choroid plexus form the epithelial cells of the choroid plexus have a lots of sodium transporters when it actively throws out the sodium and the chloride passively follows this cause the osmotic pressure increases which therefore it pulls the water due to which our cerebrospinal fluid form if we see the concentration of glucose in the cerebrospinal fluid it is about 2/3 as compared to glucose in the blood for example if we have 100 mg of glucose in the blood then we will have 66 mg of the glucose in the csf and the some other things that are transported from the csf to the blood for example potassium the concentration or the level of potassium in the csf is less than blood we have discussed about the formation of cerebrospinal fluid now we will discuss about the movement of cerebrospinal fluid how it move look at here we have basically three to four steps first is our in cerebral spinal fluid in the lateral ventricle from the lateral ventricle it goes to third ventricle via foramen that is called foramen menro and after the third ventricle it goes to cerebral aqueduct from the cerebral aqueduct it goes to the fourth ventricle and it adds more cerebral spinal fluid when it reaches into fourth ventricle and it goes to the dead end from there some part go to the central canal and the other part go to the lateral parts for example the space between pia mater and arachnoid mater are called subarachnoid space the csf go through the foramen lashka into this cerebral pontine system which is subarachnoid space and it also goes to foramen mesindi which opens into the cerebro medullary system as we can see in the diagram here our two lateral ventricles below these two lateral ventricles we know we have two thalami here along this thalami this is our third ventricle from the lateral ventricle csf move into the third ventricle through the foramen mundo from the foramen mundo it goes down into the cerebral aqueduct from the cerebral aqueduct it goes to the fourth ventricle when it comes to fourth ventricle more csf is added in the fourth ventricles from the fourth ventricles it goes into the subarachnoid space 
थ्रू दी फ्रामिन लश्का इन टू दी सेरेब्रल पोटाइन सिस्टम ऑल्सो दी मेडिलरी सेरेब्रल मेडिलरी सिस्टम इज प्रोवाइडेड बाई दी फ्रामिन मेजिंदी अवर लेटरल वेंटिकल प्रोवाइड डिफरेंट एक्सटेंशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल दी फ्रेंटल एक्सटेंशन फॉर अवर दी फ्रेंटल लोब इन अवर बॉडी एक्सटेंशन फॉर अवर पेरेटल लोब इन दी पोस्टीरियर एक्सटेंशन फॉर अवर ऑसिपिटल लोब and the inferior extension for our temporal bone if we see in the diagram this hole is our lateral ventricle it is providing the extension for example this side it is providing extension for our frontal lobe and if we talk about this one in the end this is providing for the posterior extension the occipital lobe and here we can see it is providing for our temporal bone as we can see in the diagram this is our cerebellum and it is our third ventricle and also the spinal cord in the adult it terminates at the level of l2 now we will summarize our today's lecture we will discuss what is the cerebrospinal fluid it is the special and clear fluid within the central nervous system second where the cerebrospinal fluid produce it is produced by special structure that is called choroid plexus in the ventricle system and the amount of csf produced in 24 hour is 500 ml and our body use around about 130 ml daily and it is constantly producing and it drain we will see the movement of uh, csf the csf move from the lateral ventricle to the third ventricle by the foramen mundo from the third ventricle it goes to cerebral aqueduct from the cerebral aqueduct it goes into the fourth ventricle from the fourth ventricle it start move to go into subarachnoid space into two portion the posterior opening and the lateral opening from the posterior opening it goes into the foramen magnum from the foramen magnum it goes into the cerebro medullary system from the lateral opening it goes to foramen lesca from the foramen lesca it goes to the cerebro pontine system thanks guys for watching